All right, so today I'm in the shop again, but this time I'm sitting down. <laughs> so today I'm gonna to be doing some work on the, uh, the motor and I'm gonna be doing some drilling. Now, that may not seem all that exciting, but it's kind of a critical step. Um, let me turn the camera around and show you exactly what I mean. So we have uh, the, the motor disassembled. We have blades and the spinner and grip arms. Uh, everything's stored over here. We've got the a collective head. Um, yeah, so everything's mostly disassembled and I've got uh, the motor taped off just to help avoid getting any, you know, aluminum filings inside the motor. That would be bad. Come on, focus, focus. No? Okay. Well, regardless, um, so we have this little bit. Um, this is a one millimeter bit uh, from uh, McMaster car, McMaster car. And it is titanium nickel coated to help with the cutting. Now this is a cast aluminum back plate for a spinner. Um, and it actually has been balanced. You can see little drill spot here where it's been balanced. Uh, there's a whole bunch in other spots too, but, uh, this is the 3d printed aluminum hub for everything that goes together. So that doesn't get anything done on this. All we're doing is we are drilling here. <laughs> so it is really important that not only we get it center, uh, but it, that it doesn't wobble from side to side because we are going to drill and we are going to tap for little bitty screws. See little screws? So those screws are going to get screwed into the hub on the side. Now, why you might ask? That's a good question, I'm glad you asked. So the, uh, the spinner has something that will attach it to the back plate. That is why. So I am gonna put on Ye old Gold Pro and uh, I'll show you how I'm doing this. Uh, I've got a little tool here that you'll see how it works uh, just to make things level and as straight as possible. I'm not going for hyper accurate uh, straightness here. Just straight enough will do. Uh, I've pre-measured everything. I had the spinner on here and this is where the gap is and I measured the distance between uh, each gap. And so this distance is one point uh, 1.6 millimeters and this is 3.2 and then another 1.6 here and it's the same all the way around. So every, I won't have to worry about balance or anything. Everything's going to be perfectly measured out and even. So with that, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to get drilling. All right, so uh, holes are drilled, and uh, as you can see, they are quite tiny, quite tiny. So with those tiny, tiny holes, um, I tried to drill through wherever I had the opportunity to drill through, um, and where I couldn't, obviously I didn't. I just went, I was really careful, but like, situations like there yeah so the reason that I did that is because the tap uh, which is over here and very sad I have a, I have a couple new ones on order coming from McMaster car uh, that one was uh, not titanium nickel coated so the cutting is not as good uh, broke it on the first one <laughs> uh, as a dress rehearsal for this video 
I did, which one did I do? I think it's that one. That one? Yeah, that one. Zoom? Yeah, that one. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, the uh, balancing, it comes, this is a Hyperion spinner back plate. So it comes uh, pre-balanced. This is, this is what the plastic part that comes with it looks like. Um, <clears throat> and normally, you know, there's, there's, there's screws that go through into, you know, these holes here that hold the plastic down. And I didn't want to do that because it's not scale. Uh, this is scale. It's a pain in the butt, but you can do it. So yeah, I'm just holding it in the vise here and uh, I 3D printed this. I knew that this was four inches. So I created a, a cylinder to subtract from this cube that had this little tiny nub on it that I covered, colored with a marker. And everywhere I had a mark, I just centered it on there and made it level so that I would be drilling straight into it as much as possible. And obviously the the drill vise uh, really helps to hold things steady, especially since you're dealing with such a tiny, tiny drill bit. And I do have a, a backup one here in case I drilled it out. Those were like three bucks, but the uh, the tap, yeah, those are like 14 bucks. <laughs> Welcome back. I've got a different shirt on. Uh, yeah, so mail came and I've got a new tap. New tap, focus! Too much, too much, too much. Okay, so anyway, I have a new tap. Actually, I have two. Uh, they, uh, so this is, it's my mistake. This is titanium nitride coated, okay? I kept on saying nickel before, my bad. Um, so now that I have these, I have done a couple of, well, I did one test and I cleaned up the first one that I tapped. So um, just gonna throw the Grow Pro go going <laughs> and uh, get these knocked out so you can see what I'm doing on this. And uh, the name of the game is just go slow. I'll be doing this like quarter to a half turn at a time. Once I get the thread started, I'm using plenty of uh, three in one household oil to help lubricate and cut. So seems to work. Here's hoping I don't break another one, but I do have another one. <laughs> so I've spent like uh, $45 in taps now on this. <laughs> so, yeah, do it slow. Be careful. Don't get heavy handed and, you know, bear pod about it. So anyway, I'll try not to embarrass myself. Okay, so now that my fingers are nice and oily and I'm holding my phone, <laughs> I'll show you what we accomplished here. So, I, I, you know, the GoPro only shows so much. So let me get an explanation what you just saw. So I'm taking the uh, tap. So I drilled out a small one millimeter hole and this is a 1.6 by 0.35, yeah, one, M1.6 by 0.35 screw tap thing. So, um, you know, if you look at, at this very closely, try to zoom in here, it's, it's tapered. Okay. The, the threading doesn't actually start until, you know, a couple of millimeters up. So given that this is starting as a one millimeter size hole and I'm going to 1.3, I had to grind out quite a bit to get that started and even still I have quite a bit to clean out of here but um, the problem there were a couple of problem ones um, and those were primarily let's see which that one that's a good example of one see when I drilled 
I drilled how far I had marked on my on my drill bit and I wanted to make sure that that was enough so that was tricky because I had to go down far enough to where I could feel resistance but not so much resistance that the tap was gonna snap so that's when I backed off and that's when you saw me get out a couple of screws and try to put them in and sure enough I was deep enough for the screws to do flush without the uh, without the spinner so with that in mind uh, I can now get this cleaned up and then what I'm gonna do is I can actually um, tape well, what, I'm, what, what I have to do is transfer a mark to the back of the spinner plate, precisely where each of these holes is made, right? Zoom in here. So then I can tape on my spinner and line it up with these marks. So I'm going to use my uh, digital calipers and scrape little marks where these are uh, into the aluminum so that I have permanent placement marks and same with these here. So if I ever have to do another spinner, it'll be easy to line up. So once I have that lined up, I can then mark my screw holes and do a screw hole in each of those locations. And since I know that this is three millimeters, I know that that lip needs to be one and a half millimeters or two millimeters so that I have a slight little bit of overhang. And that way the hole will be right on and it should spin true and everything will be great, right? So <laughs> that's the plan. So let me get this cleaned up and yeah, we'll see. All right, well, after a brief battle because steel, tiny screw, fall down in hole, make lock up. <laughs> I got it out, thankfully, no harm, no foul, but something I hadn't even considered. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll try to get some aluminum screws so that uh, that's easier to, to uh, take care of and the, the magnet is not going to play too much of a role. So as you can see, you've got uh, those holes lined up with where the grip arms go on each one. It's looking sharp and uh, I'm pretty happy with it's fairly well centered. Uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it's I, I've certainly seen worse and I've seen worse fly. <laughs> um, now uh, this again is uh, PETG. If you haven't uh, if you haven't seen my video on how I vacuum form this, uh, make sure you give uh, give that a view because it's pretty straightforward and it's a lot of fun. It's pretty entertaining to make that video, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I think once we uh, get the grip arms on, we might have to do a little bit more trimming at each one of these locations, and that's okay. Um, that's that's why we do plastic, and I have uh, multiples. I have I have another one of these, and of course I have the clear one. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and I of course still have the mold that I can pull more. So that'll do it for this time in the shop. Uh, it's quite a bit of work. My fingers hurt, <laughs> a little sore, but uh, you know, good, good times. So it's little things like this that just take time. You gotta be careful and uh, have fun machining your flying works of art.